for, for fiscal year 23-24. This is the public testimony portion of the budget hearings. We're holding this meeting both in person and also on Zoom, so there may be some folks on Zoom that would want to offer public testimony also. Um, you need to fill out the blue cards if you're going to provide public testimony this evening. And each person as they speak will have three minutes at the chairs in the front. And as we get started, I'd like to ask our county administrator to give an extremely brief overview of the budget message that you delivered to us early this morning, and we can go from there. Thank you. Yes, Chair Parks, thank you. I'll give the, the three-minute version of the budget message. The proposed county budget for fiscal year 2023-2024 is $1.2 billion dollars and including the eight service districts of which the Board of Commissioners also governs, the total, total county proposed budget is $1.8 billion, the most ever in our history. This is a balanced budget as required by Oregon law. Uh, the big driver this year was to find room in the general fund, or what we normally call, or what property tax base is derived from, uh, to fund the replacement county courthouse. The state of Oregon is paying half of the cost of the construction of this new court, replacement courthouse, and under direction by the Board of Commissioners, the county general fund will fund the other half. The board is not asking the voters to raise their taxes or fees to pay for this construction. To accommodate this cost, the county general fund will need to pay approximately $15 million a year for 30 years. Therefore, to accommodate and prepare for that, each department and office at the county was requested to help come up with a total of $15 million in reduction to general funded departments to prepare for this cost. Uh, the total general fund for the upcoming fiscal year is $155.9 million. Every office and department, including offices led by elected officials, were asked to make a reduction. It is not across the board equal, it is strategic, and every department or office has a higher or lower percentage of reductions proposed. That is part of the proposed budget for you to discuss and deliberate tomorrow, actually, what you agree with or what you don't. I mentioned today, I'd like to say again tonight, uh, the board and myself and the budget committee is committed to public safety at Clackamas County. Counting this courthouse payment of $15 million a year, which is part of public safety, and including investments to the sheriff's office, district attorney's office, juvenile department, and disaster management department, the total proposed budget of funds of the general fund going to public safety is $116.1 million, which is 74% of the county's general fund. Almost two thirds of the general fund is going directly to public safety. Um, uh, it's been public that the sheriff and I disagree on uh, her proposed budget. I've submitted my version of a proposed budget. She shared her input with you today. I suspect some members of the public may wish to speak tonight, which is their right. And of course, you'll deliberate tomorrow on, on that particular topic. Um, I only did what the law requires me to do, Oregon State Law and the County Code, which I'm the budget officer for all offices, departments, and special districts of the county, and I propose to you this budget. So that's a quick high-level version of the budget message. Thank you, Chair Parks. Uh, thank you very much. It's much appreciated. We have a few folks in the room with us that would like to speak, and I want to just remind you again, we have uh, three minutes, and this is us listening to you is not the setting for a back and forth discussion. Although budget committee members may want to ask about clarification of a point or another, and we'll see what that means at that point in time. But otherwise, um, we appreciate it. You give your testimony and then you can you know, go on with the rest of your evening. So we don't want to keep you all evening for that. So, Chair, uh, can I just yes. make one comment? Yes, of course, yeah, thank you. Commissioner Savas. I think it's important, and so a little bit, because the unusual circumstances surrounding the budget, um, a lot of things that have been put out in the media, social media and others have created a lot of confusion. I think it's important to say that the uh, Board of County Commissioners um, uh, is committed to making sure that there are no staff cuts whatsoever in the sheriff's office. I think there's been some c confusion around that. 
I want to just express my gratitude for my colleagues staying true to the core, true to that mission of making sure that there's no cuts of any existing sheriffs or any unfilled positions. All positions are going to be funded and filled, period. And we were faced with that kind of a budget, which I appreciate our staff working on that because staff heard that from the county commissioners and drafted a budget that did that. The only other budget that was presented uh, for the sheriff's department had 34 cuts in there and we could not support that kind of a budget. We were adamant that we were gonna fund every position. There is some confusion, I think. I think there's some disagreement of philosophically how to technically budget amongst the staff. I hope that it gets worked out. If it cannot get worked out, I will be calling for in future weeks or months or soon, I'll be calling for either an audit or mediation or some kind of oversight into trying to settle or rectify any technical approaches uh, to that. But I think it's imperative that, uh, at least for me, I believe that the most important thing is making sure that the sheriff's office is fully staffed in order to keep our county safe and, and honor what the taxpayers um, have supported continuously, whether it's the levy or whether it's ELED or the general fund in general, I think it's important. So with that, um, I will end my comments there, Chair. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Ready to proceed with the people in the room that have filled out the blue cards. And then uh, after that, I will check with our clerk and see if there's anyone on Zoom who wishes to speak. So John Mullen, you are the first person to be called forward. Thank you very much. And please speak directly into the microphone. And thank you. I will. Thank you. Um, Chair, uh, Chair Parks and members of the Clackamas County Budget uh, Committee. I'm happy to be here on behalf of myself, John Mullen. I was formerly the director of Clackamas County Social Services. I'm still involved in a number of different advocacy efforts, but I'm here on my own behalf today. Um, I did submit written testimony, and I hope you'll have a chance to review it. So I'm going to summarize and talk about a couple of things in a little bit of a different uh, perspective. But first of all, I want to start with gratitude for all the work that, you, that goes into all of this. I want to thank the county staff as well as all of you. And I just want to say, too, that for the citizens that step up to do this, to be volunteers on the Budget Committee, that's really admirable. Really appreciate your scrutiny and your advocacy, because you speak for all of us. Um, for the process, I want to just uh, note that um, I found out about most of this about a week ago, uh, as, as far as what I'm going to be talking about, about the cuts in social services in the volunteer program. So uh, while Clackamas County prides itself on being transparent, and I see there's a lot of good information out there on the web, a lot of good budget information, I don't know how proactively the discussion was about uh, what amounts to a partial dismantlement of the volunteer program. So I'm very concerned about that and hope that in the future, as the county thinks about what it means to have volunteers and what it means to have a good, strong focus on community participation, that you'll give ample consideration to talking to the community about these things. I, I also want to mention just briefly about the courthouse. Um, I moved into this beautiful building back in 2004 with the Social Services Division, and I just want to say that not a single program was cut, not a single FTE was lost in that process. Now, I realize times are different, things have changed, there is a different deal, but obviously the courthouse is going up right behind us, and I'm not opposed to the courthouse uh, coming into being, it's important, but it also has to be balanced out about other things that the county budget does. And so um, I would like to really give uh, you an opportunity to think about as you do this reconsideration, deliberation over the next couple of days about what it means to have a strong volunteer program. Um, it's not a mandated program, I understand that, but it's a tradition and it's also a value as far as the county is concerned to make sure that we have people that are really engaged. We had a very strong volunteer program when I was around as director. Um, it's a really terrific thing to have people step up and do the work because they appreciate the opportunity and the people that get the service on the other end are the ones that really benefit. So I just wanna say, um, just to conclude around all of this, um, to say that 
the RSVP program, which is completely eliminated, which came as a bit of a shock to me, we've done that program for decades. And I'm sorry, I'm running up against the end of time here. So I just would hope that it's given the consideration that it's due about not only the, the tradition, but the value and the opportunities moving forward to engage county, county uh, citizens in the work the county does. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry, Martha. John, I just want to thank you for coming because you and I worked together for many years, and I remember uh, part of the issue is that uh, we insti you instituted RSVP. Uh, another program that's uh, is potentially going to be cut is uh, the Children of Incarcerated Parents, which I think you remember that I started with Rod Cook and Debbie Marston years ago. It, it, this has probably been, in all the years I've been here, probably one of the most... Um, it's, it's, a, it's a painful process. And I do remember when we built this uh, building uh, and we, we didn't, uh, we actually, if I remember correctly, I believe that we actually used allocated costs to help finance it at the time. Mm -hmm. um, because we didn't do a bond then either. But what I remember is that uh, they came up with the the scheme, the, the, not the scheme, but the framework where if we had all the departments pay a certain amount, kind of like a rent for this building, and I believe we also did the same thing for the development services building, so. Yes, Th yeah. thank you, Commissioner you know, but, Schrader. Yeah. But it's a pleasure to see you. I wish it was under different I just would add that uh, I'll be 102 when this is paid off. So I know. <laughs> I'll be in every budget hearing. <laughs> okay. I'll be older than that, John. It's nice to see Ellen here, too. Oh, okay. uh, John, I, I know you, we're running short on time, and I super appreciate your um, introduction. We have not had the chance to formally meet yet, but thank you for your service to the county. Um, being the new guy, I would like to know a little bit more about what this program specifically does and why you feel like it's essential. If you could be quick and, and, and give me a painted picture for somebody that, that you would be introducing to, to this brand new. Ooh, very good. I'd start with the volunteer connection, which is the way in which we housed all of the volunteer programs. That's going away and the remaining programs will be parceled out. Uh, the senior companion looks like it's going to have a new focus, which I don't understand what that will be about. Uh, but the RSVP program that went away, it used to be called Retired Senior Volunteer Program. It's just now known by the acronym because people of all ages up to 50 plus can volunteer. So the volunteers did everything from assisting with emergency management issues to working in libraries to working in senior centers uh, to helping in any number of ways. And at, uh, at its, um, its height, we had about 2,000 volunteers. And so it was something we talked about that during the time of my tenure here that Clackamas County ought to be known for volunteerism. As I said in my written report, um, my written testimony to you, that I don't believe that government can do everything. I don't think anybody believes that. But when you engage the citizens in saying, you can be part of the solution here, rather than uh, just identifying the problems, you can be part of the solution. So volunteerism is important for the volunteer to have a role, to participate, and it's important for the services that are delivered. So that's not quite an elevated yeah. speech. But, but I do have a, I have a follow-up with that. So it looks like that this, we're, we're eliminating potentially one FTE for $142,831. Mm -hmm. am, am I correct in understanding that that one FTE coordinates has coordinated up to 2,000 volunteers that engages in the community to vulnerable population? Uh, uh, Commissioner West, I don't have uh, access to the current information. I've stayed away from Clackamas County to make it easier on my successor. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, whatever it is, that, that number, I don't know that even the volunteers are aware of the fact that the program has been cut. Um, and so uh, I think there's a need for uh, the commissioners uh, to, to think about and talk publicly about, even in spite of whatever budget changes you make about how volunteerism is important. So uh, Brenda Durbin could give you those exact numbers. Uh, John, thank you for, for your testimony. I wanna take a critical eye at that and thank you for bringing it to our attention. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. I neglected to say, and I will add now, that when you come to the podium, please give your name and your area of residence. And 
Also keeping in mind that this is a budget hearing, budget testimony, so speak only about the budget. It's not discussion about others. Some of you, I'm not sure which portion you're going to speak on, but I just wanted to be sure and say that so that we get it out there. Next up is Jennifer Pitcairn. Thank Hello. You. you have three minutes, Jennifer. My name is Jennifer Pitcairn from Gladstone, Oregon. I've been a member of Clackamas County and I have a small business here the last 26 years. And in hearing what's going on um, with the budget, I was concerned about that the commissioners were not looking at what the sheriff was introducing with her budget. And I did watch the, um, I'm not going to have the acronym correct, but the EDL. E-L-E-D. -E meeting yesterday, I um, watched that and felt like that the um, she was still not able to present what she felt like was needed to be heard. And I would appreciate that the commissioners would look at that information. I do um, hear that there may perhaps be some mediation, but I feel like as a constituent, I really want to make sure that the sheriff and that department is fully funded as I'm hearing that you guys say is happening, but make sure that all the uh, funds that we have asked for are being used wisely and um, that everything is taken care of properly. So I appreciate all of your work, everybody's work, but want to make sure that, again, the sheriff is heard and felt uh -huh. things are done properly there. Thank you. We appreciate you coming in tonight. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Eugene, is it Whitley or Whiteley? Whitley? Whit. Whit. Hey, Whit. I only brought three pages today. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. My name is Eugene Whitley, and I live between Milwaukee and Gladstone in the unincorporated district. Mm -hmm. We've lived in the, uh, my wife and I have lived in the, in the area a short time, only about 49 years. <laughs> I had the opportunity to attend yesterday's budget work session for the ELE budget. I can, all I can say is, wow. Budgets are not who is right or who is wrong. No one has a crystal ball. It is usually based on what happened in the past and what is projected for the short term. I have several comments. First of all, it was obvious that a new system or model was being used by the budget team. It was obvious that the sheriff's budget people were using another model or software used previously. As I recall, Sheriff Roberts prepared his budget and submitted to the county. I can understand how Sheriff Brandenburg would continue to provide that budget to the county. Continued the practice as in the past. Apparently, the administrator was given full control. Why? I didn't have a sense that, that was communicated in the long, early in, in the spring. I would strongly recommend that a new model or process is introduced, when one is introduced, one meeting or sharing of the data is never in, enough. I work for a multi-million dollar company. When we processed a budget, we sent out initial guidelines to the departments. They reviewed it and got back to us. We had several meetings to communicate any revision to those numbers. In other words, there was a lot of communication back and forth. Listening to what was said yesterday, there was not much open communication between the administrator and, and his team and the sheriff's budget people developing the budget. I agree all parties need to get together so everyone is looking at the same model and the same dollars Based on the meeting yesterday, I'm not sure whose numbers to accept. Two questions. When will the detailed byline item of the 2023-2024 budget be available online to the public? And how frequently is the monthly performance available once the new physical year comes about? Recently, I was introduced to a site called the Oregon Office of Economic Analysis. They publish monthly economic forecasts 
revenue forecast and population forecast. Based on the numbers I heard yesterday, and I'm not sure that I would agree based on the Oregon Office of Economic Analysis that the budget uh, projections on growth for the economy and for population are correct. Finally, it is my understanding that to some extent you all wanted to be transparent. I didn't see that much yesterday. Taxpayers be watching, watching to evaluate the results of this budget. And finally, I want it to be known that I respect all of you. I respect the sheriff from top department, from top to bottom in that department. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Cindy Fletcher. Good evening. Uh, my name is Cindy Fletcher and I am Deputy Director at Northwest Family Services. I'm here because our Children of Incarcerated Parents program will be eliminated by the coming budget cuts. And I'd like to ask you to continue funding it at $122,000 a year. This is not a program where we enter a person's life for a short period of time, but one where we are working with each youth for an average of six years. Typically, a child enters our program in fifth grade, and we work with them until they graduate through high school, from, from high school. And oftentimes, they stay connected into our, with our program into adulthood. Our staff act as a consistent adult presence in the life of the youth and ensure basic needs are met. We are able to provide a stable, positive adult presence during a very tumultuous time in their lives. We currently work with 96 Clackamas County youth and family members. The youth range in ages from nine to 17. They have an average age score of nine. Many are foster kids or homeless. They are highly traumatized with little or no support. We have seen remarkable success with this program with virtually all of our SIP youth finishing high school and going on to get jobs and or complete vocational school and college followed by jobs. Three currently work from, for us, one of whom recently was placed on the dean's list at Portland State University. Consider Mary, a remarkable 10-year-old girl and the oldest of three children. Her younger siblings have special needs. One is a medically fragile and the other is deaf and autistic. They were victims of a terrible crime which left them homeless. It was committed by Mary's stepfather, who is now in jail, but threatening the family. Working with our SIP partners, Mary started a new school, got new clothes, and finally has her own room. And Mary's sis younger sister began early intervention therapies. The support has provided comfort and stability during a difficult transition, and is only the beginning of our relationship with that family. We cannot abandon these youth. Please reinstate the annual funding for our Children of Incarcerated Parents program. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. One moment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for being here. Uh, our records show that uh, the reduction proposed is 90,000 annually. Uh, what is that? proportion of your entire budget. The Our budget is $122,000. So that is... In, to, in totality, so this is the majority of it. This is the majority of it. Thank you. And the budget covers uh, 1. staff, 1.5 staff people, and then uh, we work with partners to help uh, with uh, basic needs for the kiddos. Thank you. Thank you. John Baker. John Baker, I live in uh, Oregon City. Um, I've been here almost five years, and uh, I feel a little bit underdressed. I didn't, I should have wore a shirt. But I just wanted to remind all of you of the importance of security and uh, show my support for the sheriff. Um, I'm a combat veteran, 
And every combat veteran knows that if you don't have security, you don't have anything. And that's all I wanted to say. I just want to show my face. And um, I think that's better than, you know, a Zoom call. So thank you. Oh, thank you for being here. Thanks for coming forward. Thanks for your service. Thanks for your service. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anyone on Zoom, Tony? Madam Chair, I will begin with Cassie Wilson. Ms. Wilson, please state your name and area of residence. You will have three minutes. Good evening, Chair Parks and members of the committee. My name is Cassie Wilson, and I'm a resident of Boring. To be transparent, I haven't looked at any budget materials because I don't have the time, and I understand that you're mostly just looking at cutting budgets, but regardless of all of that, I am here to ask that you please fund reliable paratransit service countywide. I'm a full-time student and an active community member, but what many people don't know is that I also caregive for my mom. She's no longer able to see well enough to drive, so I take her to all of her appointments and errands. A typical week for me looks like going to class on Mondays and Wednesdays and taking my mom to appointments all the other days. Providing transportation for appointments that she doesn't need me at is the most time and resource intensive care that I provide and keeps me from having time to work on homework or just simply rest and take care of myself and it keeps her from having independence. When I learned of the county's transportation reaching people program, I thought I'd found relief. Instead, I was warned that because of where we live, it would be difficult to serve my mom, that no rides are guaranteed, and that we'd be better off checking with other service providers. But you are my local government. You are supposed to be my local service provider. So where are the services? The county's transportation reaching people program is put simply not reaching people. This is no fault of the county staff who run it. Expecting volunteers to fill the gaps of our inaccessible transportation system is inequitable, unsustainable, and is leaving people's needs unmet across the county. What's the difference between me giving my mom rides or a volunteer doing it? It's still unpaid labor. You all say that you care about mental health, so why don't you try meeting people's basic needs and see what happens? I'm filling in the cracks of broken caregiving infrastructure and an inaccessible transportation system, and it has massively impacted my mental health because I am hardly left with time to exist as a person. I'm grateful to have access to mental health support but I cannot therapy my way out of a broken system. People need to be able to access healthcare, go to the store, work and school, and participate in the community. And we cannot expect re county residents who can't dr drive to rely on friends and family because we've got places to be too. We've got our own appointments, classes, or work that we're skipping to get them to where they need to go. If you want a reliable service, if you want an actually accessible service with accessible transit vehicles, you have to fund that service and pay people to run it. We could be creating good union jobs for paratransit operators who get people where they need to go, but instead, Clackamas County residents are left with basically nothing and told to try elsewhere because the current program is not working. Please figure something out and fund a real paratransit service for Clackamas County residents. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. We appreciate that very much. Do you have anyone else on Zoom? Madam Chair, we will continue with Jeanette DeCastro. Ms. DeCastro, please state your name and area of residence. You will have three minutes. Thank you, hello. My name is Jeanette DeCastro. I live in an unincorporated Clackamas County, um, close to Happy Valley. Um, thank you. Um, Chair Parks and the committee. Um, I uh, appreciate that we're working hard on the budget and there's a lot of priorities that are competing. Um, what comes to mind for me is that our government, uh, our county government is in service of people and our community. Um, all of the things that Clackamas County does, um, whether that be economic development or transportation, housing, our justice system, parks and trails. We have those for people. Um, to bring this to our region, in about 2015, two thirds of workers left Clackamas County to work in other counties, our neighboring counties. 
and more, you know, 20 to 30 percent more workers left Clackamas County than our neighbors. Um, to bring that home, as part of a region, housing is part of that, right? So I think by making a big change on Project Turnkey and making some choices to remove funding from our health and human services, I think that was um, the wrong choice. I think that has impacts to this budget. Um, I'm a dreamer. I want to think big. I would like to see funding for things that serve people. Um, I would like to see safe routes to school funding for the entire county, not just areas within our urban growth boundary. I would like to see more parks and libraries. I would like to see um, TRP funded. Um, that is a service that is near and dear to me also because my mother-in-law uses it. And unfortunately, um, she had to ask for a last minute ride because one of the drivers didn't show up. Um, and that, that's, a, that's troubling. Reaching people is really what it does and it's been a boon for our family. Um, really concerned about the staffing cuts to human services. Um, we're coming out of COVID. People who need help, need help. People who are doing well, are doing well. We can't turn our backs on folks who need help. Um, please rethink disaster management. Um, the fires are in our memory, as I'm sure they are with you. Um, and as someone who lives in unincorporated Clackamas County, a way I connect is through our CPO. And so please don't take away that support. That's a way that I'm able to be involved and engaged. And if they don't have that staff report, support, excuse me, to, um, to help us in non-city areas, I don't know that the five commissioners have the staff to take all our calls. <laughs> so definitely rethink that. Um, I hope you can come back to this budget and really come back to people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate your input. Thank you. Madam Chair, we will continue with Christine. Christine, please state your name and area of residence. You will have three minutes. I'm sorry, Tony, could you repeat that? Christine. So, Christine. Christine Ripley, I live in Happy Valley, Clackamas. Um, I moved uh, from Multnomah County to Clackamas three years ago. I had grown up in Clackamas County. I love this county. Uh, I speak highly of this county to everybody I know in the state and out of the state. Um, I'm really disappointed in watching the budget meeting yesterday and today. Um, yeah, I, I find it frustrating when I hear that they don't, that you guys do not want to tax us uh, in Clackamas County anymore in order to pay for this courthouse. But at the end of the day, we are paying for this courthouse. We're losing services. We're losing programs. Um, the whole reason I moved out of Multnomah County to Clackamas is because of the services I got here that I didn't get in Multnomah County. Um, my house was burglarized. Someone broke down my back door and I received little to no assistance and uh, among many other things that happened to us there. And so it's really disappointing to me that uh, it just seems like there, that there's a lot of, uh, or a lack of listening to understand each other's perspectives. And that's not just one way. Um, that's not a one way street. I do think there is some um, other ways that the commissioners could be heard um, with some of their points of view. But I also think that it's some of what the sheriff is saying is falling on deaf ears as far as community safety goes and her being forced into a position where she's having to propose eliminating positions. Um, and I, I feel like she was forced into that because uh, she's being cut $5 million. So I just think that a lot of this needs to be reconsidered and that's, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I appreciate your testimony this evening. Thank you. Is there anyone else, Tony? We will continue with Robert Beal. Mr. Beal, please state your name and area of residence. You will have three minutes. So, hello, my name is Robert Beal, and I live in, uh, in the Oatfield area of unincorporated Clackamas. Um, I'm a little frustrated from the, the letter that the sheriff wrote, the open letter to the public, and that the, the uh, regarding the public safety level levy that was passed in 2021. Um, according to that letter, uh, 
Her budget has been cut by over five million to cover a shortfall for the courthouse, a project which really should have been funded either by its own ballot measure or from the general fund. Also, in the sheriff's letter noted that to address the shortfall in the budget that she had proposed, it would have to cut some positions, 34 according to, to that letter, most of which are unfilled at this time. And the county also wants to use the sheriff's levy and ELD accounts to cover the shortfall in the sheriff's budget in order to re prevent a reduction of the officers. While maintaining staffing level in the sheriff's office should be a priority for the county commission, this isn't even noted or listed as a priority anywhere on the county commission's website. According to the sheriff's open letter, county commissioners have also taken over the budget responsibilities for the sheriff's office because of their not agreeing to the sheriff's modified budget. To me, this is the sheriff is simply trying to be fiscally responsible and make the hard choices necessary to stay within her budget. In other words, what all the county commissioners have said, this is what you have to spend. Now that the commissioners are taking control of the budget for the sheriff's office, they appear to be filling the shortfall brought about by not properly funding the courthouse in the first place by using funds raised by Measure 3556, which was the county levy or the sheriff's levy. And that action is clearly not in concert with the written language of that levy as passed in 2021 that specifically spells out in detail what those funds are to be used for. There is <coughs> nothing in that ballot language that allows for any other usage of those funds, period. The measure passed, so this is state law, and such can't be changed without another ballot measure or an act of the legislature to amend it. Looking at the current uh, priorities as posted on that website that I referenced earlier, the first priority listed is the new county, the new courthouse, excuse me. And the fifth priority listed is budget transparency quote, striving to make our county's budget structurally sound, sustainable, and tied to results, end quote. Within these listed priorities, there is no mention of supporting law enforcement anywhere, let alone it being a priority. I understand trying to balance competing priorities, but these apparent budget games are taking money from the sheriff's office to cover part of the courthouse, and then from accounts for a very specific ballot measure to cover those funds from the sheriff's office. This is not structurally sound budgeting, nor is it sustainable. Furthermore, using those, those funds for measure Mr. three, Beale, five, five, three six, minutes have passed, sir. Okay, well, the, the crux of what I'm saying is, this doesn't really appear to be sustainable or transparent budgeting on the part of the county commissioners and doesn't, uh, coincide with what state law is. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. If you would like to testify, please use the raise hand feature and I will call on you in the order received. Madam Chair, I do not have any further testimony at this time. No others? Okay, thank you. At this time, we will close the public hearing. I would ask if the committee has any further discussion. And at that same time, I would ask our county administrator, Gary Schmidt, if he has any comments or remarks to any of the testimony we've heard or that lead us in, down the path for tomorrow's deliberations. Do you want me to go first? Um, Again, I want to respect you had a conversation today with the sheriff and, and myself. Um, I'm proposing no reductions to the sheriff's office, so I want to re reiterate that to the public. Um, as far as deliberation, that will occur tomorrow starting at 8.30 a.m. We'll spend all day, all day Thursday if you need it, or as short as you need. Your time is entirely up to you. Again, if you have any specific questions you'd like answered, staff would love to hear it tonight, whether you want to verbally state it right now or before you leave, give us a note or an email so we can compile it overnight and have it ready for you in the morning. 
And it is my understanding, if I remember correctly, that the elected officials have been invited to be in the room tomorrow, and the department heads have been asked to be in the room tomorrow in case we do have any need for questions or discussion. Is that correct? Everyone has been invited to be in the room tomorrow and, and or to be available in, within five uh, minutes available, notice to sure. speak to you. But again, with respect, please tell us tonight so we can have staff prepared to answer your questions in the morning. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's good. It looks like, you know, we'll get home, f get folks home in time to do some of that homework writing tonight. So, yeah. So, Commissioner Savas. Yeah, just one last comment. Um, for those that are watching or listening, I'd encourage everyone to actually look at the budget um, and uh, whichever department it is that you're focused on um, to the last caller. Uh, I do have um, the budget page open and if you total up all the numbers, you'll see that there's more money available this year for the sheriff's budget than there was last year. That's, that's a simplification. Um, there's several pages of different budgets, but in totality, there's millions more than there were last year available. Good. Thank you, Commissioner. Appreciate it. Seeing no other cards and there being no other comments, we will close tonight's meeting and reconvene tomorrow morning.